It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary. What's up? Okay, we have a little All feedback. Right. That's okay. This is our first show and these things happen. Uh, welcome to Rave TV. I'm Steph. Uh, this is Gary. He's joining me now. Um, this is the AV Industries news TV show that Gary and I started. Uh, if you joined us last week and saw our preview, you kind of have an idea of what this is about, but if not, no worries. Uh, Gary and I came up with the idea to do a weekly roundup of all the stories, columns, case studies, everything that comes in on rave pubs, because, you know, we have our newsletters, we send these things out, but we wanted to make sure the big stories and the stories that we thought were cool weren't getting missed. So we wanted to sit down and talk about them. So that's where this is. Uh, we will be going live every Wednesday. Uh, we've been saying it, we said it like wrong. All of the last episode, it is Wednesday at noon Eastern. We will be going live uh, for 30 minutes just to talk about our favorite stories of that week. Gary, am I missing it's anything? Funny. <laughs> yeah, so the reason why I was missing when we first started is thank you, Samsung, for giving us a flip too. We love it, except I had loaded the website on there and we went live and we're only three <laughs> seconds delayed. Uh, we went live and I started hearing you and then hearing you again through the Samsung <laughs> flip. So I had to pause it over there and uh, I had to run over there to my side of my office because my office is pretty small. But there's the, I don't know if you can see it there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And so uh, I, it just happened to be at the time you went live. I apologize. But hey, Steph, I'm excited <laughs> no, to be here okay. with you today. We have a lot to talk about today. I have my handy dandy list to make sure that I have everything uh, yeah. that, we want to, that we want to talk about. And, and, uh, as you said, this is going to be every Wednesday at noon Eastern, which means 9 a.m. West Coast. It means 5 p.m. in the UK. It means 6 p.m. in the EMEA. And uh, I'm excited to be doing this every week with Steph. You know Steph as Steph of Study with Steph. By the way, how's that going, Steph? How's Study with Steph going? It's going really well. Um, the most recent episode I did was with Justin Kennington. He helped walk me through networks, which he doesn't have a CTS, but he's kind of the perfect person to help you understand networks because his whole thing is AV over IP, which, as most of you know, sending a signal over the network. So he um, is really helpful in that sense and kind of helped me break a lot of things down into like layman's terms, which is what I really, really needed. And he's used to doing that with SDVOE live, which by the way was, was yesterday too. Yeah. Yesterday was Tuesday. Uh, it was yesterday at 1 PM. So definitely visit SDVOE live and watch it because it's really good and really informative. Yeah. And uh, if you want to check out study with Steph, just go on over, check it. I'm going to screen share real quickly with you and show you study okay. with Steph. Look, you go to ravepubs.com slash radio slash study with Steph, or you can just find it on our website by yeah. going to the rave radio link and then going down to study with Steph and right there. And then look, it not only face. will, and yeah, not love that. And not only will it, we have the ability for it to send you reminders whenever we post yeah. an episode, but you're up to episode eight. Uh, mm -hmm. But look, we have a really exciting announcement today. We're going to tease that really quickly. Um, and uh, we have an exciting announcement. Um, we have our first joint venture and we've been working on this for almost a year now. Um, it's a very big deal for us. Uh, we've been working with our partner on this for a long time. Um, it's going to be a big benefit to the industry, both from uh, integrators especially are going to love this and manufacturers as well. Uh, but before we do that, we want to jump into some news stories. And the first uh, story that I want to talk about today is a uh, Pexip story about um, mating, making Google Meet meetings better. Uh, we've talked a lot about Pexip. I actually, at the, at the beginning of the year in my, in my crystal ball, predicted that this would be Pexip's year. 2021 would be Pexip's year. Uh, by the way, they're not a client of ours, so we're not here talking about them because they're a client of ours. Uh, that's not the way the show works. Uh, we The show is not sponsored. The show is news uh, and stuff. We're going to talk about my shirt in just a second. Uh, news and, but, stuff. Uh, and stuff. But Pexip uh, has really improved the experience with Meet. And what's happened with Meet is that it's become a major platform uh, with regard to um, with regard to UCC stuff. I mean, it's not just mm -hmm. Zoom and Teams and, and WebEx anymore. Yeah. 
So apparently, like previously before this announcement, it was kind of hard to find SIP join information mm -hmm. on Google Meet invitations because it was always like hidden under the more joining options tab. But this has apparently made it a little bit more smooth of a process of joining. Is that right? Yeah, basically that's what it is. And they've integrated a lot more features that that Google opened up to make it more of a UCC platform rather than just a version of Hangouts, uh, which is how it started. Um, and by the way, I'm going to be looking down and be looking up, looking over because I've got this big monitor in front of me and I'm, I'm going to kind of manage this, uh, I guess, production manage at the same time as being on this broadcast, because as we talk about these stories, I'm going to share them with you. Of course, all these stories are posted at ravepubs.com. Uh, what about you, Steph? What, what, uh, tell me about what, what things you're interested in. Sure. So another pretty big story that came out this week was Planar's uh, MGP series. It's a series of fine pitch LED displays. Those are brand new. Um, I think that they're kind of trying to make like a closer cost wise alternative to like projection or tiled LCDs for like retail, That's classrooms, correct. lecture halls, house of worship. So I think that they're really trying to cater to a wide audience um, by yeah, also, making something that can use for digital signage, but also have like a lot of different uses within it. Yeah, and in fact, they have this version of it called the MGP Complete, which is an all-in-one product. You know, a lot of the LC uh, LED companies have gone to an all-in-one where, you know, you just plug in an HDMI cable, will drive the display. The complete comes in uh, various sizes. Uh, you can see the press release uh, or the information that we wrote up about it. I actually wrote it up a couple days ago um, at ravepubs.com. It's the MGP series uh, image. This is an uh, image of it. And this looks like a house, but it's actually in a co-working space. Um, and uh, it's modular, but also you can order it as, uh, as pre-built yeah. sizes as well. Um, 108 inch. 130 inch, 163 inch, all 1080p native resolution. It's a beautiful product. Uh, planar, as you know, is a, a big force in, in LED. You know, they used to be planar, planar, layar, layar, planar, but now they're just planar, but they're still part of layar. So uh, that's- They look really pretty. They look, the resolution looks really, really crisp on those. Yeah, I'm very impressed. I mean, they've always done a great job. I miss seeing them at trade shows because they always have some of the biggest, most awesome booths. Um, yeah. Yeah, you wanted to talk about, uh, what else? Let's see, what else did you want to talk about? What's that? Do you want to do personal news corner? You want to talk about your shirt? Oh, yeah, let's talk about my shirt. Well, I, this is okay. Mandalorian. And yes. I often get asked, how does Mandalorian fit in with the Star Wars canon? Right, that's the term official. Yeah. It's, you know, the movies. Because, yeah. you know, the first like, movie that came out in 1977 was, was A New mm -hmm. Hope, which was, a lot of people call it Star Wars 1, but it's actually Star Wars 4. Um, episode four, and but, you saw you saw it at what the Chinese theater? I saw it at the Chinese man's Chinese theater in 1977, <laughs> the first weekend it came out, uh, in May 1977, right after my birthday. But here's the canon here is how everything fits in. You can see that Mandalorian here fits in right after Return of the Jedi. And if you've seen the series, the finale of episode two was amazing, and it is related to the movies four or five and six and some of the major characters there. The whole thing is about the saving baby Yoda thing, but there's some new series coming out that you should pay attention to as well um, that are going to come out. And this is where they fit into uh, this is where they fit into the canon. I mean, often some people ask, you know, solo, for example, which was a standalone movie. Where did it fit out? Where did it uh, fit? It's between movie three and four. Obviously there's a new TV series called Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm very excited about that. Ooh, I'm excited. This happens between three and four and it is starring Ewan McGregor, the guy who played yeah. Obi -Wan Kenobi in episodes one, two, and three and Hayden Christensen, the guy who played yeah. Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker in episode three are coming back and uh, it has some other amazing uh, people in it. I'm excited about it. If you like Homeland, you're going to love this uh, series because some of the great stars from Homeland are in this. But um, and but this is the canon. This is officially yeah. it. So now you know where everything fits in. Steph. Hayden Christensen was in episode two as well, wasn't he? Wasn't he, was he in, like a, didn't he, was he have a two, three arc? Correct. He fell in love in episode two, uh, obviously. Yeah. And, then, and they like got married and had the twins. Yeah. So yeah. Three. That's exactly right. I mean, they had to, yeah. you know, they had to, uh, they had to say that they got married, but you know, who knows if that's yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, anyway, 
So on, yeah. on to other news. So what do you think? Should we talk about this joint venture? Yeah. Do you want to you want to talk about it now? Yeah, well, might as well. Okay, might as well. Let's bring it up. So, Let's talk about so, it. Um, as you know, the Rave Agency has been around for a long time. We our our mission is to serve the AV industry as the number one information source. Everything that we do is geared around helping integrators and manufacturers do a better job of keeping everyone informed about everything that's going on in the AV world. So when we started with Rave Pubs back in 2003, it was a publication aimed at in educating integrators on everything new that manufacturers were coming out with. And there was just so many new products coming out. Now we have on a daily basis, 25 to 30 posts a day on new stuff that are coming out, whether it be blogs or, or product stories or press releases or whatever it might be that we're posting. So that's a publication. It's number one publication globally. Nobody's bigger than us. Um, we publish more news. We have more readers. Um, you know, we have 130,000 social readers alone. I mean, social media followers, for example, alone. So we, th that's where pubs fits in, right? The agency was to help manufacturers do a better job at targeting integrators and, uh, you know, sort of making sure that they had unique ways to get products out. We, we, um, we started launch um, about a year and a half ago as a, uh, as a extension of our hybrid show coverage. We've been doing, by the way, we've been doing trade shows. This is something I know, you know, Steph, since 2009, we've been covering shows hybrid. We've been going to shows, shooting thousands, not hundreds, thousands of videos. So like at ISC last year, we saw almost 1600 videos at ISC 2020. So you, you can go to raypubs.com slash ISC 2020. You can see all those videos that we shot. But we've been doing that since 2009. The objective and what we did that for was to help integrators because let's look at a show like ISC say 40, 50, 60,000 people go to that show. That means 200,000 are not at the show. So we wanted to make sure that those 200,000 had access to all the new products and information at those shows. So that's where everything fits in. Launch was a hybrid event platform that sort of grew mm -hmm. out of our Rave Now live coverage that we did at shows. And uh, of course, we've been using Launch primarily at launch.com, L-A-V-N-C-H.com primarily as a virtual event platform, but it'll come back to be a hybrid event platform as shows come back. The first big show that will be back, big show, will be Infocom in October. Yeah, October. In October. But the agency has added a new talent. Uh, so if we head on over to the agency website and you look next to the word launch, you're going to see X10AV. Uh, X10AV is the leading, first off, the only, but leading AI-powered cloud-based design platform in the industry. And we are forming a, we have formed a joint venture with them to make sure this becomes the standard for designing AV systems and simplifying the AV industry in every possible way. This is aimed at integrators and manufacturers, both integrators and manufacturers, and even in users can benefit from this. If you go to the, the raveagency.com, click on the X10 AV link, you'll go down, you'll see where, well, how do manufacturers benefit? How do integrators benefit? How do end users benefit from this partnership? I'm going to click off of that. Um, and uh, we have a video of what X10AV is. Um, but basically what it is is four things in one. So remember, it's all cloud-based. This is not something you have to download, not something you have to that you have to uh, configure your computer to use. But it is a systems design tool that allows you to design AV systems fluidly um, and uh, and simply, and it's got a, it's, because it's got AI, it knows if you forget something. So for example, if you have a Gazenta and a Gazauta and you have a source and a display and you're missing a cable, like for example, if it knows that audio and video are gonna be routed and you're missing an audio cable, it's gonna tell you. But this is populated with all the major products in the AV industry and it allows you to draw systems and then share them across the cloud with everyone in your organization. Everyone knows what everyone else is working on. So let's say you're working for an integrator that has 25 salespeople um, and tech su uh, support people. Everyone sees that, can have access to that system design, can see the, the workflow drawings, the, the every bit of the, the any file, any connectivity drawings, anything that you did with this system. But also it takes and turns that system drawing into a proposal for you. So it actually generates a proposal and because it's integrated with a CRM, you don't have to use a CRM, but it comes free with it. Integrated with a CRM, that means you can manage the, the process of bidding and, you know, when did you send the proposal? What did the customer say? And manage your relationship with your customer. And it's all um, powered through AI and automation. Um, so 
check it out. Go there, check it out. You're going to hear a lot more about this. We have a team specifically dedicated to um, to the, uh, the joint uh, to the joint venture. Um, so if you go to our website at theraveagency.com, click on X10 AV, all the information you need to know is there on the website. Of course, you can always reach out to me if you want more information. We're going to send out a press release right now. It's going out right now to the industry so they understand. But if you're an integrator and you're, you've been on the fence about integrating a design platform that will help you design systems easier and better, make it where all your people in your organization have access to all the the drawing documents and all the systems that you're designing and all the clients that you're designing them for all at the same time globally, regardless of where you are and who you are, this is the platform for you. If you're a manufacturer and you've been trying to find a way to make sure you get all your products out to the industry in a timely manner, this is the platform for you. And we are going to, to do whatever we can to make this easy and, uh, and, and also a powerful uh, tool. And we're going to integrate it into everything that we do. Um, so you're going to see a lot. This is, I can't tell you all the things we're going to do because we don't want to give away the secret sauce, but it's not just, we're not just offering a platform here. We're building something really big. That's going to allow us to keep manufacturers and integrators connected in a very unique way. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. Hey, Steph, I appreciate the time to be able to talk about that. I'm yeah. really excited about this, but it's been no, almost yeah. a year. Yeah. And I think at our last launch, I believe it was um, X10 AV had a spot as a sponsor and I just remember the networking feature like blowing up with people excited to learn more, excited to learn what X10 AV is all about. So I think that it'll be really great for them to have a way to do that through us because they're already used to going to our site and learning about things through us all the time anyway. So this is going to be a really easy way for people to learn more about X10 who are interested. So I think that it's great. Yeah. And we're excited to talk more about it. This is just the beginning. Um, we have this whole plan over the next uh, year of how we're going to make sure yeah. we, bring, we bring this to the industry in a really organized way. We're bringing people on to manage this. It's going to be really exciting. And uh, I, I, I can't wait to talk to you more about it. But on to other stories. Oh, um, yeah. By the way, we have an audience comment. Uh, Doug asked why I'm trapped inside a closet. Um, this is actually our closet. office. This is not a closet. This is the just like how we have our bullpen in one of our offices set up. So we have all of our like rave swag right here, um, which just makes for like, you know, an interesting. Turn, Turn your camera around so people can see what okay. the office looks like. Here. Okay. And she's in the creative office. So, yeah, office. this yeah. is our office. Well, um, we have flip like, around. okay. Flip it around so people can see. This and... is the creative this is the creative team's office. Of course, yeah. this is COVID land, right? I mean, hardly anyone comes in. We do have a couple of people in today helping us with this broadcast. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. So this it, is, yeah, kind of our little bullpen area. And then we have across the hall, this right? little, oh yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. So Kelsey wrote me that nice note. And then we have more desks on the other side of that little divider thing. Um, yeah, speaking of my birthday yesterday, um, yesterday was my day. It was my birthday. Um, and, so and you everyone, share a birthday with someone really important. Yes, in the I share a birthday with my industry best friend, Chuck Wilson, who emailed me to tell me that we had the same birthday yesterday. And which just made me so excited because it makes so much more sense now. Like why he and I just like vibe whenever we're on a live event or something together. It makes so much sense. We're born on the same day. So that's why. And I, yeah, I was really excited to share that with everyone. <laughs> and and, and uh, we got some more news to cover. We have a few more stories yeah, we, we want to cover. With you before we wrap up this first episode ever of rave TV. Yes. Um, so was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, HEPMA filed for 501c3 nonprofit status, which is really exciting. Gary, you're a HEPMA member through UNC. Um, HEPMA is the Higher Education Technology Managers Alliance. Uh, Joe Way founded it. He's very great. He's worked with us on a few different launches before, and he's just a great speaker, great dude all around. Um, and uh, BC Hatchet also, they, they founded it and they filed a formal articles of incorporation, or I think it's called to become a 501c3 non nonprofit. Because I think before they were, uh, I don't know, were, were they You're before just an organization? organization? Yeah. So I think yeah. this will, the getting this status will kind of solidify them as a really great end user education kind of organization within our industry. Um, and, you know, there are, there are like great tax benefits that go along with that as well. So good for them. I'm really happy and I hope it works out, but it looks like it will. 
Yeah, I'm a member of HETMA because of the fact that I teach at the University of North Carolina. It is specifically for higher education professionals. Um, and the, Joe's done a great job. In fact, by the way, hats off to Joe. He did all of this while dealing with a house fire. His entire yeah. house burned out about six months ago, right before the holidays. And, uh, you know, of course, we, we uh, tried to help him out as much as we can. The industry came to his aid. Uh, what a great guy. Um, and congratulations to him. I've really enjoyed being part of this uh, small part of this team um, that have put this together. Um, but uh, we have more news to share. We have mm -hmm. more and more news. And we have, a, we have an awesome case study that, that yeah. LG shared with us yesterday. And Case who study has, of the week. Yeah, who, who has not gone through LaGuardia and hated it? Uh, I well, LG can't is stand that airport. I think I it's like one of the rings of hell, actually. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. LG is going to make that experience better with some good mm -hmm. signage. But listen, the reason why we've highlighted this is I love the stretch display. I love that fl uh, format. I love how they did this. Um, and uh, these work perfectly for this type of an application. You can see it's horizontal. It can be done in portrait or landscape. Um, that is one monitor. That's not two different monitors. That's like basically like two 55-inch monitors stacked on top of each other equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's the same thing in a, in a horizontal or uh, landscape configuration. Um, and and this, this uh, case study is on our website at raypubs.com, as are all of our stories on our website at raypubs.com. And uh, I'm going to share the last one and let you talk about the last one. Okay. Yeah, Actually, you have two so, more, right? You have two more because you have Yeah, you have we can talk blogs. about, yeah, let's talk about the two uh, really good blogs we have this week. So first one, Tony Sprando. We, <laughs> Gary's talked before about how much he likes Tony's name. Um, yeah. He definitely gives a soprano kind of feeling. Uh, but Tony and Kate Couch, they will co-write a lot of articles for us. And this one is really, really cool. Um, I think Kate mostly wrote this one. But this is about how we use um, things like Alexa and Hey Google and stuff in our house. But what she writes about is how do we incorporate this in a conference room setting as a lot of us are going to be looking at going back into the office in the next few months, six months, year, um, and how we can incorporate this type of technology and maybe why people have been hesitant to incorporate this technology into a corporate setting in the past. So I think it's really interesting and really useful. It's not that long. So highly recommend giving it a read. Um, yeah, and, and I, I love the article. And then there's one other here from uh, Murphy Daily uh, that I think. Yeah. So Murphy is, she has a lot of project management experience in our industry, and she's also a member of our blog squad. She writes for us. So a lot of what she's written for us in the past has been about just what it's like to project manage uh, for AV and what that looks like. So this article is about what goes into the bill of materials when you're on an AV project. And she gives a lot of really good tips for other project managers out there, as well as integrators for how to make this project go as smooth as possible. Because when you are on an AV project, chances are you have a bunch of different pieces and parts that are coming in, some in different boxes. Maybe it's one part that's coming in multiple boxes. Maybe it's multiple boxes with multiple parts. Like it can get so easy to be really disorganized on an AV project. And so she just gives really good tips for how to stay in charge of all of the parts that you order. And just to make sure to, you know, you don't want to end up paying for it if you don't end up using it just to like stay organized and on top. So it's really, really technical, but really good advice if this is something you're running into. And if you're wondering, we have blogs that are posted all the time on our website at raypubs.com. Check it out. If you just go to the homepage at raypubs.com, you'll see a section that says blog squad. Here's all of our writers. If you're interested in one particular writer and you just want to see what they have to say, you can go directly to them. Or of course you can scroll down to from the blog squad. These are the latest articles on our website. I want to point out the trending now section. This is always the latest news. I'm very excited about this new AI tracking camera from, uh, from Aver um, and using educational spaces. We need more AI tracking cameras, meaning things that you don't have to actually wear to actually track um, you know, track where, uh, where mm -hmm. the presenter is. And, um, and, 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 and so this is a great place. You can see that the case study we just talked about is already number two on our website. And it was just posted yeah. yesterday. So I think this is going to be, uh, you know, we love case studies. If you want to send us case studies, by the way, if there's any news that you want us to run, all you have to do is send it to me directly, send it to, send it to Steph directly. We'll make sure it gets to the right people or just write down this email address PR as in press release PR 
at ravepubs.com, PR at ravepubs.com. And uh, there you go, Steph. I want to, hey, yeah. by the way, we didn't mention up, up at the top of the hour, this show will always be streamed on ravepubs.com on the homepage, yep. always on Twitter, always on LinkedIn live LinkedIn. every Wednesday mm-hmm. at noon. Uh, Steph, I've enjoyed doing the first episode with you. Thanks for the uh, for the time. I'm really uh, excited about where this can take us. Yeah, same here. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you to everyone who's joined. Hope you'll join us again next Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. for sure, at noon Eastern. Um, and yep, looking forward to see you guys next week. Thanks, Gary. Bye from Rave TV. Bye, everybody. It's the weekly show about Pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up to Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary.